Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 17 to 21 um, of section 3 of the blue booklet. So this is a question about the preparation of beta hydroxy acids. So have a read over the information that's given here. There's quite a lot of it and it's quite useful, especially the notes at the bottom that I've covered. Um, figure 1 here, I've divided it up into the two steps just to make it a little bit clearer. Uh, question 17 uh, talks about 3-hydroxybutanoic acid um, and it asks which of the following alkyl groups could be part of their respective reactants in this preparation. Um, so this question seems a little bit more complicated than it is and I think the best way to answer it is just to copy out the general formula for beta-hydroxy acid um, that's given here. So I'll do that first. So we've got these three residual groups and I've labeled them R1, 2 and 3 instead of using the dashes as they used in the diagram because I think it might make it a little bit easier to explain. Um, so we're given the IUPAC name here and from that we'd be able to draw out the structure of it. So we know butanoic acid uh, will have obviously a carboxyl group here and four carbons in its chain. And we know that it's going to be three hydroxy so on the third carbon along there's going to be this OH group. And we can see it already how similar that is to the diagram above. And we can fill in the structures here and work out that this is going to be R3, this is going to be R2, and this is going to be R1. And we're also uh, in this question given possibilities for what R means, um, but that doesn't actually affect the final structure of the beta hydroxy acid. As long as it's not a hydrogen, it will be fine. Um, so it doesn't matter in this question what the group R with no number beside it actually is. So the other thing I wanted to say is that R2 and R3 are interchangeable here. It doesn't matter um, what way around they go because that wouldn't change the IUPAC name. So if you swap this hydrogen and this methyl group around, it wouldn't change the IUPAC name. Um, so R2 and R3 aren't strictly in those positions. Okay, so looking at the different options we have here. Let's go through them. A um, says that all of these residual groups could be equal to hydrogen. So if that was the case, we wouldn't have this methyl group, so we know it's not going to be A. If we look at B, then it says the R group is going to be a uh, methyl group, and then R1, R2, and R3 would be hydrogens. So the R group, as we said, doesn't really matter, but R1, 2, and 3 couldn't all be hydrogens because, again, it is methyl group. C then says that R and R2 could be CH3, and R1 and R3 could be hydrogen. So that would work because we'd have R1 being hydrogen and R3 being hydrogen, which would be okay because R2 would be a methyl group. And of course, it doesn't matter what the R with no number beside it is. So the answer for this one uh, is going to be C. That would work. And just to rule it out, let's look at D, which says that R1 and R3 would both be a methyl group. So that would mean that you'd end up with two methyl groups in the beta hydroxy acid, and that would be different to the structure that was described. Um, so answer for this one is going to be C. If we look at 18 then, if we look at 18 then, um, it says the reaction sequence described in figure one would produce three hydroxypropanoic acid uh, under what circumstances. Okay, so again, I'm just going to get rid of this diagram here and we can do the same thing again and draw the three hydroxypropanoic acid. So again, it's got this carboxyl group and instead of four, it's got three uh, carbon atoms in its longest chain here. These residual groups will all be hydrogens. And we can see that this is gonna be R3, this is gonna be R2, and this is gonna be R1. So going through the options again, it says um, option A, they could all be equal to hydrogen. Now that would sort of work if we were to produce this beta hydroxy acid and we would want R1, R2, and R3 to all be hydrogens, as we have in this structure. But if we just had R, and that's R with no number beside it, being a hydrogen, then we'd be breaking one of the rules that they said. So in the note, the top note, it says the bromo compound must be an alpha bromo alkyl or aryl ester, not an alpha bromo carboxylic acid. What that means, basically, if we go up to the top here, we can see that this here can't be a hydrogen, um, because then the final product would be H2 and that wouldn't quite work here. Uh, so if we had the R group, and again, that's the R with no number beside it equal to hydrogen, we'd be breaking that first rule, so that's not gonna be an option. So A is not gonna be an option here. B, as we know, would produce 
um, something that, that could work again because we've got R1, R2 and R3 all being hydrogens. And then the second thing we have to check is, is, is if this rule is broken and it's not because we've got a methyl group there for R. So B would work in this case. So the answer for 18 is going to be B. But just to rule the other two out, um, C says that R and R2 could be CH3, but that wouldn't work because if this is CH3, we'd end up um, with the same answer as answer 17, and we'd be producing 3-hydroxybutanoic um, acid instead of 3-hydroxypropanoic acid. And then D uh, wouldn't be right for the same reason. Okay, so looking at question 19 now. It says which one of the following could be produced by the reaction sequence described in figure one. So we've got some four hydroxies and some three hydroxies. And then I, I think this question seems again a little bit more complicated than it is. But if we look at the general structure for this um, beta hydroxy acid, it looks like this. We've got our R groups again here. So we've got a hydroxyl group um, and this carboxylic group or this carboxyl group will always have the highest priority because these R groups are just going to be hydrocarbons. That means that this is always going to have the highest priority. So this is going to be carbon number one, this will be carbon number two, and this is going to be carbon number three. And so in a beta hydroxy acid, the OH group will always be on the third carbon, which means it's only possible to produce three hydroxy something. So under no circumstances for a beta hydroxy acid would you have a four hydroxy something. So that means that the answer straight away for this one, again, is going to be B. Another way you could look at this is that um, in the second sentence of the first paragraph, it says um, the hydroxy group is on the second carbon from the acid group. And that's another way of saying it's always going to be on the third carbon along the chain. Um, so that's why the answer for this one has to be B. If we look at 20 then, it says in order to prepare the compound 3-hydroxy-4-ethylhexanoic acid by the reaction sequence described in figure one, the two reactions needed are what? Okay, so it's, it's pretty much the same method as we needed before. We're just going to draw out the 3-hydroxy-4-ethylhexanoic acid and see um, what these R groups would be and then put that back um, into these original um, reactions here and try and name them and that will give us the answer. So 3-hydroxy-4-ethylhexanoic acid obviously has six carbons in it so we'll draw in our six carbons first and then we've got our four ethyl group. So if we've got our carboxyl group here this is going to be carbon number three making it the 3-hydroxy. This will be the fourth one so we can put our um, Ethyl hexano or ethyl group here, which is going to be C2H5, and then everything else is just going to be um, hydrogens. So we'll just draw this in here. Okay, so again, this whole bit here is going to be R3 or R2, again, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is going to be R2, and then this is going to be R1. So if we have a look at the um, alpha bromoester it has an R group and an R1 group. So it's alpha bromoester. I'll just draw out the general formula for it first. Again for the formation of the product which is the beta hydroxy acid it doesn't matter what this group is. Uh, it doesn't go into the product so it doesn't matter. As long as it's not um, a hydrogen then it's not breaking any rules. Okay so we can just substitute in our R1 group here and we can get this structure and this is going to be a uh, methyl bromoacetate so this is the acetate group with the brom bromine on it and if this was a CH3 then it would be methyl bromoacetate um, it's not going to be uh, sorry it's not going to be um, ethyl bromoacetate because we have a hydrogen here instead of a methyl group okay so then what about the um, other reaction which is going to be this ketone or um, aldehyde. So looking at the general formula for an aldehyde that they've given us here, it's going to be R3 and R2. If we substitute in our R3 and our R2 values from up here, we get something that looks like this. 
Let me just scroll up. Here we go. This is going to be a hydrogen, and then you can fill in the rest of them. And then this R2 group is also going to be a hydrogen. So um, now it's a matter of just naming it and choosing between A and B. So obviously because we've got this ethyl group on the second carbon, it's going to be 2-ethylbutanol. And that's going to be because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons in its longest chain. So it's going to be 2-ethylbutanol and methyl bromoacetate, meaning that the answer for number 20 is going to be A. And then if we look at the final question, which is 21, it says under the conditions of the reaction sequence in described in figure one, the reaction between acetone and propyl bromoacetate would produce what? So it's basically the opposite way around from that. Let's draw out the structures, work out what the different R values are, and then plug that into our generalized formula. So acetone in the form that they've given us would be CH3 and CH3. Of course, this is going to be R3 and R2. And then if we look at, uh, what's the other one? Propyl bromoacetate. So that would look um, like this here. So now that we have um, our different groups worked out, sorry, this is going to have a um, C, 3H7COO. Okay, there we go. So that's going to give us our different groups. So um, we know that this is going to be R1, and then over here we have R. And of course, this doesn't matter for the, the final product. So if we drew in um, all of the different groups we have, we see we have our OH group here on the third carbon along for hydrogen here. R1 is going to be a hydrogen, R2 is going to be a CH3, and then R3 is going to be a CH3 as well. And that gives us um, an answer of 3-methyl, three 3-hydroxybutanoic three acid, um, because we've got our four carbons along, so that makes it butanoic acid, and then the third carbon got a hydroxyl group and our methyl group. So a 3-methyl, three 3-hydroxybutanoic three acid, and in this case that gives us an answer of D. So that was a pretty tough question, but I think if you keep going back to um, the original figure, it's not too bad. So that was questions 17 to 21 or unit 5 of section 3 of the blue booklet. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.